Hi, Emmanuel here with T2S. And T2S stands for Transform the to Succeed. You want to learn more about what, what we do and how we change people's lives? Look at the link, you know, the website address at the bottom of the screen. Just go there and you're going to find, find more about what we do and how we change people's lives. Today in this video, what I want to talk about, it's going to be around the, this concept here. It's, uh, it's called GitLab. Uh, GitLab, it is a, a technology. Uh, it, it, it integrates Git, you know, the concept of Git. And, and, but, but it does more. Kind of like, you know, GitHub. But, but this one has uh, more uh, features to it. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about, uh, about what it, it does. So, so Git, when you think of Git, uh, <clears throat> when you think of Git lab, you're looking at not only uh, technology, because when you talk about uh, Git lab, so you may probably say, okay, so this is uh, this is something like GitHub. It is uh, it, to some extent, but this this one does a little bit more. It does uh, it does a little bit more than just uh, you know just you know doing what like GitHub does. And then the first the first thing would be uh, you see here number one. We're gonna talk about a repository, so you can you can of course create repositories on uh, uh, I mean like host repositories on GitLab just like uh, GitHub. the The other thing you can do with um, with GitLab is that you have uh, you can take advantage of uh, some of these uh, features. Uh, which are, you know, I would say that uh, GitLab is like an all-in-one platform. So that, that's a great advantage, all-in-one platform. And, and, and this means that, you know, I mean, for, for the, de the DevOps cycle, so you're looking at uh, Git, you know, you know where, where, where you store your code, uh, and then uh, how you can integrate that into a CI, CD, and then send it into production. So instead of having like Jenkins on one hand, and there you have GitHub uh, for your repositories and stuff like that. So you have all of these in just one place. Okay, so that's that, that's another uh, another benefit of uh, of using uh, uh, Git GitLab. You, you, you're talking also about the security integration. You're talking about enhanced collaboration. You're talking about scalability and uh, flexibility. Uh, so the other, the other feature that I want to uh, mention to you, you know, when you talk about uh, a repository, you're looking at the, the, what we call as SCM. So SCM uh, stands for uh, it stands for uh, uh, source code. It stands for source code. Source code management. Source code management, and then it's a little bit similar to uh, uh, to GitHub. But but you have uh, you have one more thing here, which is issue tracking which you don't have on uh, github issue tracking meaning that it includes uh, this uh, system which will allow team members to manage and then track the progress of of that work uh, and uh, number four and which is very important that you don't have on, on github uh, it's uh, a wiki and documentation so when when you think of wiki you you're looking at uh, uh, this feature which allows you to 
uh, create like a base, a knowledge base, meaning that people can go there to learn stuff about uh, your uh, application life cycle, or systems life cycle, or anything that you want to share some uh, knowledge about. And and then w- one thing that I want to uh, to mention here is uh, monitoring, monitoring and analytics. So that's uh, that's another thing that comes, another feature that comes with uh, GitLab. And lastly, we talk about uh, security and compliance and compliance. And I said lastly, but not really lastly. <laughs> so there's there's uh, there's one thing he, he I need to mention. That's a CI and CD. See, so that's uh, uh, that's another uh, feature that you have. Uh, plus, you also have container registry on on GitLab. All right. So now, what we want to do next, which is a very important piece of our demo today, is we will be uh, so we will be. We'll be doing two things here. Number one, we're gonna create an EC2 instance, and then we uh, 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 using Terraform. So we use Terraform to do that. And number two, we will install and configure GitLab on our ET EC2 instance. So that's, these are our tasks for the rest of our video. And where do you go get the, the code? You go to my website, you go to my GitHub uh, repo here. So you go, you come here, and this is where you're gonna find uh, the documentation. So what you do, you just git clone this one, this thing here. So you're gonna git clone this and then uh, put it on your local machine. I'm gonna show you how you can do something like that. So uh, th- this is my my uh, this is my my lab, my home lab, okay? And and uh, I have a directory that I call GitLab projects. Okay, so in here. So I have uh, uh, several stuff here, several things here, and you know, just simple projects that I've been working on. So what you do, you just git clone like this here. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna git clone, then you add the URL. So go to the URL here. So you're gonna go copy, then you're gonna paste it there, and then enter. So you're gonna enter, once you do that, what, you, what you're doing is you're going to clone into this one here. Then you're going to copy all of that. Uh, give me a moment here. You're going to copy all of that. Uh, hold on. All right. So I had an interruption and decided to pause the video. Now I'm back. All right. So uh, here what what's happening is so you have copied this direct directory which is a, a remote repository that you know something that i stored on my git hub account and uh, everything is here and if we when we ls we want to list everything that we have in this directory on this folder we're going to see this thing here all right and here it is so you do what you do you go into that by using the command cd clear my screen and you ls you're gonna see these five 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 files oh sorry i wasn't showing you this all right so what i did was uh when you ls uh, i'm gonna do this uh sorry about that 
So when you ls, you have the name of the repository on my GitHub account. So if you go here, you see it's here, right? So this is the name, okay? And then back to my command line, we have downloaded this on my local machine, right? Uh, next, uh, change directory to go into that. Now clear, if you ls to list the content of this directory, you're gonna see five files here, and that's exactly what we have on GitHub here. So you see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you, you said uh, what you need to do is to make sure you open this file here, meaning that you open your directory, and when you open this, you will see something like this. Okay, this is what I have. So the next thing that you're going to need to do, the next thing that you're going to need to do, I'm going to remove this thing here because I don't need it. I have it on my computer already. So I'm going to do that. All right. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, because I already have it. So I have this and this is where I need to be. Okay. So on mine, you know, I have also have this, but, but you know, I have a, an additional file here. So this is a, a key pair that you're gonna need to you're gonna need to create. Uh, sorry. So you're gonna uh, this is the key pair. You're gonna need to create on AWS. So you go you go here. Uh, go to the EC2 dashboard here. And come down to where it says key pairs. See here. So you go there, click, and this is where you create a new key pair. And uh, you see that I have several here. So to create, you go to create key pair here. So you're gonna click there. You're gonna give it a name, uh, like uh, Git Lab. Uh, other because I have another one with GitLab as the name, and uh, and what what happens is that uh, when you click create key pair, it's gonna download it. So you see you see here, it's uh it's gonna download it into the download folder. So you're gonna need to go to the download folder um, I'm gonna change that I'm gonna go you have to go to the download folder this is my download folder here so you see it's here other and and what you need to do you make sure that it goes you uh, take it to wherever you have your script okay so like uh my scripts are here. I'm going to copy it. So click copy. And my scripts are in here, personal projects. And then I'm looking for GitLab. Uh, if I can find it someplace here. So I click here. And then you see this is the folder. You see the name here. You see here. GitLab Terraform AWS here. So if I go back here, I open this one. So this is the correct. You see the name? That's the name, GitLab Terraform AWS. And what you do, you uh, let's say we want to use something different, then you're going to have to paste it here. Paste item. You see? So it's here. And... I'm using Visual Studio Code. It allows me to see, to open folders, and I have my command line here, and this is my file, and this is my file system to the to the left here, and then this is the new uh, key 
that we just added, all right? And in my case, I will not use it. So I'm going to delete it. And as you configure, uh, before you do anything else, you're going to need to configure your Terraform tfvars file here. So you make sure that you have the name. You see the name, the key name here? It's the same that I have here, GitLab dash server. Okay? That's the name. And then the key path, you're going to need the, the, the correct peak, uh, key path. Let's say if you have this one in a different uh, location, then you're going to have to go copy path. So if you copy path and then you paste it anywhere here, so I'm going to do this. So, you know, this is the correct path. Uh, the entire path of all of where my uh, 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 key is uh, residing. But since I am in that same location, the same location with my 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 key here, so then I don't need to enter everything rather than just uh, this one here. So you can use the the uh, the path here. So let me see here. So this is the full path you can use the relative path so i copy that and this is the relative path so you can use that too okay and because it's we are in the same location where our key is residing all right so back to the documentation here the readme file this is what you need to do okay so you've done that you you have uh adjusted your Terraform TFVars file, make sure the region is correct, make sure you have the correct AMI. You're gonna need at least uh, a medium uh, instance uh, size, and you have the names of the key name and the key path is correct. So that's uh, done. So you clear my screen here. Uh, uh, back here, Step number one, you want to initialize your, your, your working directory. So what you do here, you're going to initialize the providers, uh, the plugins. So making sure that uh, your, 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 your configuration uh, files, they can now commun begin communicating with the provider. In our case, it's uh, AWS. Uh, so that's done. And now you're gonna do Terraform plan. Terraform plan is to look at uh, to look at the conf uh, to look to look at the configuration, or actually to preview to preview uh, what will happen once you apply the configurations. And uh, so it's gonna be five things to be created, and then. Uh, and then we'll have, uh, we'll see the URL for our GitLab application here. So I'm gonna now apply. It's gonna ask you to approve by saying yes. Uh, give it some time and it's creating our infrastructure. And remember the point is number one, we uh, set up our virtual machine on AWS using EC2 instance to uh, which will host our GitLab. And and this is our this is our uh, this is our uh, kind of like our website. Alright. So we'll have to configure this to uh, work with our GitLab. Okay. So what we do Next is to uh, now SSH into our system. And to SSH into our system, to our computer or virtual machine, is we need to go here, click connect. And, and if it, this is a newly created uh, key, you're going to have to change permissions on that key. If not, uh, like in my case, I just go ahead and 
SSH here. So I copy that, paste it here, enter. Yes, because I want to connect. And I'm connected. The next thing that I need to do is to use this one here. So I'm going to update the packages and, uh, and the different libraries. And looks like everything is uh, it's uh, good. And then uh, we use this one here. Uh, making sure that the certificate is already the newest and the curl command is already the newest and so on. So what we do next is to set up our uh, set up post fix to send the notification emails. And this is kind of like optional, but just for the sake of learning, I'm going to show it to you. Use the tab key to move and select OK, enter, enter. Uh, so it, it shouldn't take a, lo a long time here. And then after uh, setting up, uh, uh, set, uh, configuring our email uh, things here, so click OK. We will be begin uh, uh, adding, we'll add the uh, package, the GitHub package uh, repository. Uh, I'm going to add it here and then install uh, the package. All right, that's, uh, that's done. And now we can go ahead and install GitLab. And this, uh, this may take a little bit of time here. So I'm going to pause my video and then I'll c come back when it's done. Okay, so when the installation is uh, completely done, this is what you see. You're going to see this one here, the sign here saying GitLab. And thank you for installing. Uh, then you, you you see all of this. You're gonna see this is the progress. The the the, the you know the, every step uh, uh, as as part of your installation process. So you you're done there, and then you go to oh, one one other thing is that after the installation is completed, you should be able to see something like this. Okay, so let's see if we can see it as part of this uh, here it is so you you should see something like this and what you need to do is just to go to this specific file display the content i'll copy that i'm gonna clear my screen i'm gonna do sudo and then cat and then i paste that it's gonna give me a password here this is a temporary password so I copy that. You can put it on a notepad or, uh, or someplace, uh, you know, where you keep your notes. <laughs> okay. So you do that. And, and what you now do, make sure that you copy this right there. And then go to your, your website here. So you go to the browser. When you go to the browser, you're going to uh, basically, if you go here, go to your ec2 instances find your instance and this is it and if you open this one uh technically it should uh take you if you do uh let me say this Th this is the ip address all right so i'm gonna copy that so you're gonna get the same thing here http then you have that, and then I'm going to paste the IP address. Then you enter. So that, that, that's what we have here. So you're going to do the root here. That's your username. And, and then uh, remember, you're going to have to go back and grab your password, which was generated. Copy that, and then go back to the browser here. So I'm going to 
make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna paste your password here. I'm gonna paste that there. And and then click sign in. And you should be able to see your your dashboard. And uh, uh, if, if all goes well, you should be able to see your dashboard. Uh, let's just give it some, uh, just a few seconds here. And I hope it's gonna do it okay. So it's, it's thinking. So uh, usually it shouldn't take this long. Uh, and sometimes when it, it does this, it may be, it may have to do with the port. So you're gonna have to make sure you check on your port. Let's go here, let's go to security. And the ports have been opened, so we should be okay. Uh, should be okay. Let me check on one more thing here. Okay, what you see here, it's because I decided to reboot my system. And on the command line, what I did, I skipped step number five. I went to step number six. And I decided to reconfigure GitLab. Uh, one of the things that we need to do is to take care of this line here. So we need to configure our IP address or domain. Because otherwise, uh, there won't be uh, uh, GitLab would need to point out to 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 our domain or I, in our case, it's uh, our IP address. So we're gonna we're gonna have to make sure that we go here, go here. So we uh, uh, copy the IP address. So we're using that as a domain, and then go back to the command here. We're gonna replace that with our IP address because that's that's our. Uh, that's our domain. We don't have a domain domain like google.com or facebook.com or transformed to succeed.com. And then in this case, we just use the IP address. And that's something that you will have to configure using your DNS uh, service that you, uh, I mean, that is part of your requirements at your company. All right. Uh, on AWS, you can use Route 53 to take care of that business. And what we do, uh, this command here, uh, I'm gonna explain it just a little bit here. This command, what it does, it goes to this file here. And this is the file that you configure to uh, uh, take care of uh, domain names and, and so on and so forth. And and then, so we're gonna substitute, we're gonna substitute, so we first, we go on, we go to this file, we find the line that begins with this external underscore URL. And then when we find it, we're gonna replace, uh, replace that line with this line here. Meaning that, that our external URL is gonna be this one here. All right, so uh, our users will be going to this uh, address. And that's, that's what we do here. Uh, press at enter and then we go back go back to our web browser so we'll go back to our web browser and try to uh we're gonna have to let's try the and we're gonna enter uh, our ip address here so we're gonna have to enter the ip address here I'm gonna enter the IP address. We have to copy that here, then go here, and then, yeah, enter, then press enter. So it's still saying waiting for GitLab to boot, uh, meaning that we have to go back to our command line here, go back to our command line, then we 
we're gonna need to use this command again and uh, give it some time to uh, uh, reconfigure and and apply the changes that we have made so give it some time here okay what i did i ran this command here first i uh, reconfigured uh our gitlab uh, you know the configuration file and then i restarted uh, first i checked uh, status using the gitlab uh, ctl command and then i restarted gitlab so everything is okay but you're gonna have to give it a few moments and see if this will be resolved uh, so here you have uh i'm gonna close that here you have uh still we're having this issue here so waiting for uh, gitlab to boot so this may take some time and we'll wait and see what happens next okay so that is done and we are now connected so this is uh the gitlab your dashboard and you can uh, do some configurations if you want like uh, this is the administrator uh, for instance you can you see you have groups here you can create groups uh, or you can import groups like you can say these are the devops uh, devops group and you can decide on making it uh, public or private so you make it private because uh, this is uh, something you want to do it as part of your company, your internal uh, platform for collaboration and communication and stuff like that. So you can do this and then you, you, your role could be like a DevOps engineer, for instance. And who will be using this group? You can uh, say my team. Uh, what will you use uh, this group for? Uh, you can, for instance, say store. Uh, we're going to store our code here. Uh, here you have uh, emails that you can uh, enter there, like T2S, cloud, uh, gmail.com. Of course, it will not be Gmail. It's going to be the, your company's uh, domain name there. Uh, then you click create group and then this uh, may take a little bit of time uh, depending on uh, on your instance or your server's capacity and usually don't don't use uh, medium uh, use large because uh, uh, gitlab it's uh, it's such a big the application that requires a lot of uh, storage and uh, uh, memory and stuff like that. So make sure that you uh, keep that in mind because this may take, uh, may take some time. So you have uh, the possibility of creating a group here. You can also, uh, uh, I just wanted to show you this. So I'll just go to project here. You can create project and uh, you also have a uh, merge request mr uh, you can uh, s uh, set some uh, configure some settings here you have to do list you have uh, milestones here uh, and then remember here you can also create uh, you can create a repository like if you go here click here you have a new project or repository you have new group new snippet uh, so you can do so much here the difference uh, one of the best uh, uh, benefit the greatest benefit of uh, of gitlab over github is that you have these things here uh, which gives you so much uh, flexibility you can assign issues and then here, this is where you uh, uh, you have your, your requests. And here, that's your to-do list. 
And as I said, you can add easily project a repository and so on. Um, yeah, th th this is pretty much what you need to know how, you know, in terms of uh, setting up, uh, installing a Git lab on a server. Uh, going back to our uh, command line here, our command line. So we, we, we've done everything here. Uh, and then we have accessed our uh, GitLab. So now what we do, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to exit uh, here. So I'll just close it. I'll just close it. And then I go back to new terminal. And what I want to do now is to clean up. So I'll clean up this way. I'll do Terraform destroy and press enter. Then, of course, you're going to say yes uh, in the end. So remember to do yes here, press enter, uh, give it some time. And I always tell my students that make sure that you always validate when you start the process, you run a process or a command or anything, make sure that you, you stay there until the end and then validate the completion, the successful completion of uh, uh, that process. So you're gonna have to wait until when everything is uh, deleted. But for the sake of the video, uh, I may probably have to stop now. And if you go to your web browser here, your web browser, go to your instances, and you're looking at, uh, uh, this is our instance here, the GitLab instance, and you see it's shutting down. And if you go now here, uh, it's going to, uh, soon it's going to say page not found or something like that. You, so this page will not exist anymore. Uh, just we have deleted the, the, the server and the application is no longer on our account. All right. So that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, what you need to learn about how you can install uh, GitLab on an EC2 instance which you have provisioned using Terraform. Thanks for watching uh, and uh, I would appreciate really uh, a comment and uh, if you can also subscribe uh, to be notified every time that I push out a new video. You want to enroll in my one of my classes, just go to the link at the bottom of the screen. And thank you again. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.